Okay, so here's number 20, and it's uh, another uh, 20 and 21 I'll do on this video, uh, and they're both sort of similar. Uh, so a white cat named Sam. Okay, so it's... So we have a white cat. Doesn't matter if it's named Sam. And I cross the same with a black cat. And tamed one half white kittens and one half black kittens. So that doesn't mean the kittens are half black and half white. It means that half of the kittens are white and half the kittens are black. All right, so what's going on? Looks like a one-to-one -one ratio, which suggests a test cross. So that means that either uh, one of these things has to be recessive, and the other one is heterozygous. Um, but we don't know here, we don't know which way it is exactly. Um, so we could have big A, little a, little a, little a, and then we'd still get half would be big A, little a would be white, half would be little a, little a would be black. So we don't really know which one's dominant or recessive yet. Um, but then we take these black ones and we interbreed those. So we take these black, cross to black, then what happens? Uh, the kittens they produced are black, so all of these are black. Um, so we had two possibilities up here, either, uh, so, uh, so either if white was, if, if, so black could be either dominant or recessive. So, so if we did it this way, this would make sense, uh, because once we got these guys, if, if black, if little a means black and it's homozygous recessive, then once we get a black kitten, uh, we it would be homozygous recessive across to homozygous recessive, and the only thing you could get, get out of that would be homozygous recessive. Uh, so, uh, but let's look at so let's look at it the other way. So if we had black across to white, and we get uh, half and half. Let's say white is recessive and black is dominant. You can use whatever letters you want. I just sort of get in the habit of using A's. Uh, that would mean that these black ones are big A, little a, and these guys are little a, little a. Then when we took these guys and brought them back together again, now we have a uh, monohybrid cross and we expect three black to one white. But we got all black. we did the cross, so this one didn't make sense. Now, this all black, it's a little bit, um, you know, there's not really quite enough information uh, here because uh, it doesn't really tell you uh, how many kittens there are. Uh, if there's only two kittens and they were all black, um, if we go back up to here, if we expect a three to one ratio, depends how many offspring we look at. Um, if, if we only looked at two, and they were both black, then then it could have been this. Uh, but given the uh, uh, but just if we just had to choose, uh, assuming there was uh, enough black cats to uh, to be statistically significant, this makes more sense. Um, and that's one one thing about uh, homozygous recessive traits is that if you cross two homozygous re recessive organisms together, then you always get homozygous recessive coming out. We'll see this later in pe in pedigrees. If something's homozygous recessive, the only thing we can get out of there is homozygous
heterozygous recessive offspring. And so, but if one of these is heterozygous, then you can start to get other things. Ah, so, so that's ba basically the logic. And that's, it. but uh, this one is sort of um, illustrating the trial and error approach. You can say, well, it has to be either this or it has to be that, that, which one makes most sense. Uh, the concepts that it illus illustrates are still just single genes, uh, what you would get in a test cross, recognizing that you get a one-to-one -one ratio. So then that tells you that this is probably a test cross with one gene. So let's try out that model and see what happens. All right, so that's problem 20. Problem 21 is pretty simple. Uh, let's try a green pen and see if we like that better. So sheep lustrous fleece. And so they give you... Well, let's see, what layer is that? Uh, so they give you that L equals lustrous. And little l is not. So it's always good to uh, look at the information in the question and write it down so you have definitions of your symbols. And then we have a female, we have lustrous, cross to, so we got a U, the lustrous fleece is made of the ram, that is normal fleece. The U then gives birth to a single lamb with normal fleece. Now we only have one, so we only have one offspring. So can we tell anything from that? Well, the U gives birth to a single lamb with normal fleece. Well, what we know is that normal is recessive, so we've got that. So we know that, I'm going to use this kind of an L, so we can tell the difference. So we know that if it's recessive, it has two little Ls. We know that this guy has a recessive phenotype, so it has two little Ls. We know that she is lustrous, but she could be big L, um, big L, or she could be big L, little L. We don't know anything. But because we're getting a little L from both parents, she has to be this. So yes, we know. And so those are all the genotypes. Big L, little L, and so this turns out to be a test cross, and the probability of getting this is one half, probability of getting big L, little L. So that's a pretty simple one.